Hey, what's up, everybody? Thanks for joining me on a um, book introduction that I wanted to do. It's going to be a quick one. Uh, the book that I wanted to introduce is Neil Postman's Amusing Ourselves to Death, uh, Public Discourse in the Age of Show Business. Uh, Neil Postman was a disciple of Marshall McLuhan. <clears throat> he wrote this book in 1985, and um, this is an updated version of 2006, the 20th uh, anniversary, anniversary edition. And I'm going to read just a little bit from the um, intro on the forward. It's only like two or three pages to get you an idea of uh, what Neil Postman was um, writing about and intuiting. Um, so in the back it says, uh, more relevant than ever, the prophetic landmark work exploring the corrosive effects of electronic media on a democratic society. Television has habituated us to visual entertainment measured out in spoonfuls of time. But what happens when we come to expect the same things from our politics and public discourse? What happens to journalism, education, and religion when they too become forms of show business? 20 years ago, this will be 30 plus years ago now, Neil Postman's lively polemic was the first book to consider the way that electronic media were shaping our culture. Now with TV joined by the internet, cell phones, cable, and DVDs, amusing ourselves to death carries ever greater significance. Elegant, incisive, and terrific, terrifically readable, it's a compelling take on our addiction to entertainment. I think how much things have intensified since even 2006, since even 2010. Um, so like Marshall McLuhan, I think uh, Neil Postman is time is here or still to come. Uh, so we're going to read a little bit here and uh, give you a little flavor. All right, so the... Um, little subsection here before the Fords entitled in 1985 and it's just given us a reminder of what was going on in the world in 1985 it's only about a page and a half if you were alert back then this refresher may be unnecessary even laughable if you were not alert then this may just be laughable but it also may help to clarify references in the book about things of that moment in 1985 the United States population is 240 million Cold War is still on, though Mikhail Gorbachev has just become the Soviet leader. Ronald Reagan is president. Other major political figures include Walter Fritz Mondale, Democratic presidential nominee of the year, the year before, Geraldine Ferrero, his vice presidential running mate, and presidential hopefuls Senators Gary Hart and John Glenn, the latter a former astronaut. Ed Koch is mayor of New York City. David Garth is a top media consultant for political candidates. Top-rated TV shows include Dynasty, Dallas, though it has been several years since the drama of Who Shot J.R. gripped the TV-watching nation, The A-Team, Cheers, and Hill Street Blues. Dan Rather, Tom Brokaw, and Peter Jennings are the nightly network news anchors. The McNeil Lair News Hour is, as the News Hour with Jim Lair years later will be, public television's respected, low-rated evening news program. Televangelism is enjoying a heyday. Leading practitioners include Jimmy Swagger, Pat Robertson, Jim Baker, Billy Graham, Jerry Falwell, Robert Schuller, and Oral Roberts. Howard Cosell has recently retired after many years as TV's most recognizable sports voice. The show Entertainment Tonight and the cable network MTV, both born a few years earlier, are runaway successes. Two of the most successful TV commercial campaigns are American Express's series about far-flung tourists to losing travelers' checks and whisk detergents spot about ring around the collar about which my about which my father wrote a provocative and funny essay called the parable of the ring around the collar this is his son neil postman writing here in the intro on the forward the mac computer is one year old usa today three people magazine 10 dr ruth westheimer hosts a popular radio call-in show offering sex advice with cheer and grandmotherly frankness African Americans are known as blacks. Martina Na Navratilova is the world's best female tennis player. Trivial Pursuit is a top selling board game. Certain entertainers to whom my father refers, e.g., comedians Shecky Green, Red Buttons, and Milton Berle, singer Diane Warwick, Diane Warwick, TV talk show host David Suskin, are past in their prime even then. Now here's the, uh, the main thrust here that I wanted to get to you guys to so the forward. We were keeping our eye on 1984. When the year came and the prophecy didn't, thoughtful Americans sang softly in praise of themselves. 
the roots of liberal democracy had held. Wherever else the terror had happened, we, at least, had not been visited by Orwellian nightmares. But we had forgotten that alongside Orwell's dark vision, there was another, slightly older, slightly well, less well-known, equally chilling, Aldous Huxley's Brave New World. Contrary to common belief, even among the educated, Huxley and Orwell did not prophesy the same thing. Orwell warns that we will be overcome by an externally imposed oppression. But in Huxley's vision, no big brother is required to deprive people of their autonomy, maturity, and history. As he saw it, people will come to love their oppression, to adore the technologies that undo their capacities to think. What Orwell feared were those who would ban what, what Orwell feared, feared was those who would ban books. What Huxley feared was that there would be no reason to ban a book, for there would be no one who wanted to read one. Orwell feared those who would deprive us of information. Huxley feared those who would give us so much that we would be reduced to passivity and egoism. Orwell feared that the truth would be concealed from us. Huxley feared we would become a trivial culture, preoccupied with some equivalent of the feelies, the orgy-porgy, and the centrifugal, centrifugal bumble, pumpy, bumble puppy. As, Hus as Huxley remarked in A Brave New World, the civil libertarians and rationalists who are ever on the alert to oppose tyranny, quote, failed to take into account man's almost infinite appetite for distractions. In 1984, Huxley added, people are controlled by inflicting pain. In Brave New World, they are controlled by inflicting pleasure. In short, Orwell feared that what we hate will ruin us. Huxley feared that what we love will ruin us. This book is about the possibility that Huxley, not Orwell, was right. So, just a quick... Uh, quick video for you guys let me know what you think if you wanted to share some more readings or, or, or analysis from this book um, so happy new year everybody and uh, thanks for chiming in god bless